Hi guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be doing my review of Mentats of June by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. So this is like the penultimate June book. Um, obviously there's the six original Frank Herbert books, and then Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson work together on a bunch of them. And this is the second last of those. I only have Tales of June left, which I'm looking forward to reading as well. Uh, I have really enjoyed just cracking on with the series. There's also a book called Dreamer of June, which is a biography of Frank Herbert, which also has uh, an, a novella in it, which I don't think is available anywhere else. So I'm looking forward to getting to that but we're going to talk about this book today i'm going to read you the blurb i'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs and then i'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end so dane reads the thinking machines have been defeated but the struggle for humanity's future continues gilbertus albans has founded the mentat school a place where humans can learn to mimic the efficient techniques of thinking machines but gilbertus walks an uneasy line between his own convictions and compromises in order to survive the anti-technology but Lyrian fanatics led by the madman manford torondo Mother Superior Raquel attempts to rebuild her sisterhood school on Wallach 9 with her most talented and ambitious student, Valia Harkonnen, who also has a secret goal, to exact revenge on Vori and Atreides, the legendary hero of the Jihad whom she blames for her family's downfall. Meanwhile, Joseph Venport conducts his own war against the Butlerians. His Venhorde spacing fleet controls nearly all commerce thanks to the superior mutated navigators that Venport has created, and he places a ruthless embargo on any planet that accepts man for Toronto's anti-technology pledge, hoping to starve them into submission. But fanatics rarely surrender easily. As the Butlerian fanaticism increases, the battle is on to choose the path of humanity's future, whether to embrace the advance of civilization or to plunge into an endless dark age. And I really love this kind of stuff because I love the kind of the clash between science and religion. Um, I actually really liked it in the previous books where it was humans versus robots and now this is sort of humans versus other humans who are so afraid of robots even though they're dead that they don't even want to use things like a hand blender because that's that's too technological. But they're fine when they're using their spaceships to spread their bullshit to other planets, obviously. Anyway, uh, as with all of the Dune books, there's a lot of quotes kicking off each of the sections and those are quite often the bits that I choose to highlight because they also kind of summarise the, the action. You'd, you wouldn't really get the plot just from reading the quotes at the top of each section, but you would get like an overview of the broad themes of the book. So here we have a quote from Headmaster Gilbertus Albans from the Medtat School Archives. What do all our accomplishments matter if they do not last beyond our lifetimes? Here's a quote from Director Joseph Venport from a Venhold internal memo. Blind adherence to foolish ideas makes people act in ways that are demonstrably against their own interests. I care only about intelligent, rational human beings. And there's a great line um, that just goes, People often surprise me, but not usually in a good way. Oh no, my sticky tab is stuck to the page. Here we have a quote at the top, the top of the chapter from a mental observation and warning. Never underestimate the power of revenge as a motivating factor in human society. And here's a quote from Gilbertus Albans from the Annals of the Mentat School, redacted as inappropriate. A memory can be the most painful punishment, and a mentat is doomed to revisit each memory with the clarity of immediate experience. And here we have from Headmaster Gilbertus Albans, initial lectures at Mentat School. Humans and machines are fundamentally different. I find it strange that each should try so hard to emulate the other, which is true, that's like true for our own world as well. The Simek General Agamemnon from A Time for Titans. Anyone who searches for the meaning of life is on a fool's journey. Human life has no redeeming purpose or value. Another quote from General Agamemnon, he was a great character, he's actually not in this, but his quotes are obviously. So, from A Time for Titans. If you strike me, I will strike you harder. If you hate me, I will hate you more. You cannot win. And that just kind of reminded me of Obi-Wan Kenobi with if you strike me down, I shall become more powerful than you can possibly imagine. Quote here from Gilbertus Albans from his personal journal, Mentat School Records, redacted as inappropriate. Thinking machines did not have a monopoly on cruelty, for human beings do unspeakable things as well. The Butlerians paint machines with too broad a stroke and use only the colour black. They do as much harm to human civilization as the thinking machines ever did. So this is from the Sisterhood Training Manual. We get quite a lot about the Sisterhood in this, um, but not too much, which is also good because I don't find them as interesting as some of the other things. I was actually surprised by how interesting I found uh, the Mentats, but I think a lot of that is because of Gilbertus Albans and, and who he actually is, um, which I don't want to tell you, but you will know if you've read the books. <laughs> so from the Sisterhood Training Manual. It is not enough to survive great adversity. You must also share what you learn in the process so that you prevent a recurrence. Otherwise you widen the scope of the adversity and create a singularity into which even more lives may tumble. This stems from a basic truth. Humans are a collective organism and that organism performs best when its members recognize their common interests. 
We don't always do that though, because we're human beings and we're fucking stupid, aren't we? All right, so here we have a quote from Drago Roger, Re report to Venport Holdings, analysis of fanatical patterns. Just repeating a statement, often and with great vehemence, does not make it a fact, and no amount of repetition can make a rational person believe it. However, it will make an irrational person believe it, unfortunately. From Wisdom of the Cogitors, Cogitors, every person can be manipulated, and all of us are in one manner or another. And this is very true, we're all manipulated by algorithms. A note from Director Joseph Venport, Instruction to Business Trainees. Successful people sort through priorities and act upon them, while the unsuccessful see only a fog of chaos. From Vorian Atreides' private journals, every person has a powerful urge to return home. We go there to find meaning in our lives, even if our memories of home are filled with sadness. And that's especially true for him, who's had a sort of artificially lengthened life. Uh, and this is a mentat conundrum to which there is more than one correct answer. How many people can be told a secret before it is no longer considered a secret? I reckon one and we get this great little one two between Ptolemy and uh, Norma so Ptolemy is speaking to the navigators and he says we will punish them but Lyrian superstitions can't protect them from superior weapons and superior minds and Norma says ignorance is a powerful armor against the truth this is an ancient admonition all power bases are made of flesh and must eventually decay and crumble and I think that's what made the machines um, so terrifying as opponents and then we have this quote here from Gilbertus Albans from Conversations with Erasmus. In any major conflict, each side fights for its own cause, a belief system they consider worth dying for. Alas, there is not an objective, omnipotent arbiter who can simply decide the merits of each issue and put them to rest without bloodshed, thereby rendering armed conflict obsolete. Alas, indeed. So we get this great quote here as well that I want to share. All humans die, the only variable is timing. And so, that's about all I have I want to highlight from Mentats of June. I will say, this is probably one of my favourite of the books that the two of these have worked on since the original Houses trilogy. I find it even more interesting than the stuff about the Butlerian Jihad and the war against the robots, because this kind of covers the aftermath of that. And it has those elements of basically human religion being batshit crazy, which I find just so appealing. There is one more book in this trilogy to read, and this does sort of set us up for a sort of triumphant denouement. So I'm looking forward to getting to that, and then uh, Hunter of June, I think it's called, um, which is a biography of Frank Herbert. But overall, did enjoy. So I gave Mentats of June by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson, four out of five. <laughs> So there we have it, that's what I made of Mentats of June by Brian Herbert and Kem J. Anderson. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments what you thought of this book, if you read it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I'll see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.